Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about should you be a web developer, specifically uh, should you be a front-end developer, should you be a back-end developer, should you be a full-stack developer, which one pays the most? We have a, we have a couple uh, articles we're going to look at, as well as some census data to make this decision. I don't, I don't, when, I like do, when I do these videos, I've done some about being data scientists, I like to more so just look at the, the facts, really. The job site stats, the U.S. Um, Bureau of Labor Statistics, uh, those types of things that really give us a look of, is this a good career path and why? Speaking of making good decisions, if you're interested in web development, might you consider going to a coding boot camp to get your start and get a jump start on your career? They have four different locations. They have Provo, Utah, Salt Lake City, Utah, Phoenix, Arizona, and their newest location, Dallas, Texas. I've been to the Provo, Utah one. It's a beautiful campus, and they have housing included with their tuition. So if you're interested in things like uh, full stack development, UI, UX, QA, Salesforce, they have all that. So go ahead and check them out at devmountain.com. So we're going to start this video off by talking about salaries and a little, a couple things that I want to talk about on top of that is um, titles. Titles oftentimes at a role will help determine what amount of money you get. And the good example I'm going to give you right here is front-end web developer. So if you've ever heard me, I say I'm a front-end engineer. That's what my title says. And that's the, re the reason for it is not because I don't like the word developer, but because by and large, the word developer will actually make you $10,000 less. So uh, you can see the average base pay of a front-end developer is about $88,000. It will round up to $87,000. And you'll see here the front-end engineer salary, which is pretty much identical to the role of a front-end developer. And this isn't counting senior or junior. We're just going with the general titles here. You can think of this as a mid-level position, someone with two, three years experience. Uh, this is their average base pay, but you can see the same, pretty much the same role. The highs are higher, the lows are lower, and the average is better when you're using engineer. So for a front end engineer, I just wanted to say that, and obviously if you have junior in your title, you're gonna probably make less. If you have senior in your title, you're gonna probably make more. So it's something to uh, keep in mind, but this video isn't necessarily so much about how much money you make uh, between a front end, back end, and full stack engineer, uh, but what's the best choice for you uh, going into the field? Because most of these you're going to make pretty good money um, as you as you start. So 98000 average base pay for a front end engineer. We'll go ahead and drop that. Uh, according to Glassdoor, now Glassdoor is just one of many, many sites, but uh, from what I found looking at a couple different, you know, LinkedIn salaries and things like that, is that you're going to generally see this trend of where front end engineering is slightly below a back end engineer salary. <laughs> um, and uh, you'll see here 105, about a $5,000 uh, difference between the front end and back end. In the scheme of things, not that much. Full stack engineer, though, in comparison, is about 115,000. So you're you're definitely moving your way up to a, a full stack, meaning that you can do the front, you can do the back, all that sort of stuff. You, there's definitely about a fifteen, seventeen thousand uh, dollar, seventeen thousand dollar difference between front engineer and full stack engineer. What I will say about this specific thing, since we are talking about money with jobs, is that. If you want to specialize, naturally you'll become a full stack engineer. I, I consider myself a full stack engineer, even though I do front end engineering right now because I do Node, Express, MongoDB. I also do PHP and MySQL at previous roles. And um, now I'm just specializing in front end. And what I want to say about that is as you're, as you're progressing through your career, what will end up happening is in terms of your salary, in terms of what the money you make, it's not going to matter so much about the job. It's going to matter more about how accomplished you are, how much you stand out from the other candidates, and how much you're actually in reality worth, right? So there are plenty of front end engineers who are, you know, making twice what a average full stack engineer makes and vice versa, right? So it's really going to come down to you. And this is one of those things that some pe sometimes people struggle with because they're like, well, I don't want to live my life around software. And I understand that. I do. But um, 
if you, you know, you have courses, you have books, you have some marketing attached to you because you give speeches and lectures and you're becoming somebody who of note within the space, it's, you know, and you have an impressive resume, impressive portfolio, impressive companies behind you, um, and you've done everything right, you can make a ton of money regardless of your job title. But that, that with that being said, let's jump into the, the, cons the U.S. Bureau of Labor of Statistics data, and I want to point out two main things, and this is a little bit of marketing and a little bit of job skills. So the two th ones that we're going to be looking at job-wise are web developers and software developers. So you might be saying, Dylan, the front-end engineer, the software engineer, the full-stack engineer, it was like a 95 to 115,000 average. This is saying 66,000 uh, median pay. Why is it? Why is there such a discrepancy, right? Uh, well, partly because web developers, I think, in this tense, in this sense, uh, is encompassing a lot of what I tell you guys to stay away from. But it is important to note because some people are interested in that. So, you're interested in WordPress development. You're interested in uh, more of a web design aspect of, you know, the mom and pop building websites. This is about what you're going to expect to make. This is um. This is when I had my first internship. This was roughly what the guy made uh, with 11 years' experience. He made uh, actually exactly this. He was making 67,000, and um, he had 11 years' experience, essentially doing web design with minimal web development. The occasional jQuery, like this, is one of the reasons I also say stay away from jQuery because the type of roles that are very jQuery heavy, they typically pay about this, um, which is fine. For most people, you know, 66000 is more than the average family in America makes, which is about 55000 So um, you're, in the scheme of things, doing quite all right. The barrier of entry is associate's degree. So basically, uh, uh, if it's not a bachelor's, it's nothing as far as I'm concerned, right? Um, associate's degree is, uh, you know, that's where you would be if you wanted to meet the barrier of entry for people to get started. It's gr The growth of the job, right, is great. 15% uh, uh, job outlook for 2016 and 2026. Number of jobs, 162,900. This to me is really in that sort of mom and pop web design slash dev space, which is why the pay is so low. Um, but it is a great uh, entry point for junior developers because of the low uh, ed education level, the work experience and related occupation, none, the on the job training, God knows we don't get any of that and any, pretty much any job. But um, I think it is, is worth noting that there is quite a difference between a web developer and a software developer, at least in how the Bureau of Labor Statistics um, looks at it. And that, you know, we just looked at, you know, Glassdoor, which is used by thousands upon thousands of people and companies to post salaries, review companies. And you can see that you know, the full stack developer is making, what was that, 50000 60, yeah, about $50,000 on top of what's there. And so almost doubling it, there's quite a difference in discrepancy. But this is, they are grouping a lot of different things into one category of web developer. And I think, uh, I think most of the jobs that we're talking about, front end developer, so back end developer, full stack developer, it sounds kind of weird because they are web development, but you're not necessarily web developers in the sense of how the Bureau of Labor Statistics look like it. You're, you know, the front end engineer developer roles. I think you're going to more so fall into the software developer category. But uh, before we move on to the software developer category, what are the sort of three things that really matter when you're looking for a job? Uh, for me, it is high salaries, uh, the amount of jobs, and the growth in that field. And the reason for that is you want to get paid well. You want to make sure that there is jobs available. And you want to make sure that the field is expanding because even if you are qualified with experience, now you don't want to necessarily have to be competing against other people who, you know, a job ends three, four years, good job. Uh, you want to you want to be able to jump back into the job market, not like doing the rat race, just stressing because there aren't any jobs available. So you want to be in a field that's growing, and web developer is pretty good in that aspect. So let's go on to software developer. <laughs> software developer traditionally falls more into the uh, more into the um, object oriented programming languages, things like C sharp, uh, things like Java. 
Uh, more of those college, more of the languages I guess you would learn in a computer science program. Um, you can see the jobs here, 24%, much faster than average. It's going to be hard for you to, uh, as someone who looks at this stuff quite often, you're not going to see stuff much larger than that. Um, the average median pay is about 102, which falls more into the front end engineer, the back end, and full stack. Uh, typical entry level education, bachelor's degree. A lot of people ask, should I get a degree? And I always say that it it depends because on average yes but not everyone needs a degree you just have to be able to prove that you don't need it right you can't just say oh well I don't have a degree and I can't prove it uh, I'm a I'm an okay example of that I don't have my bachelor's I'm actually enrolled in an online bachelor's program right now and I've been working as a developer for a little less than than two years now and I, I do quite well for myself um, so uh, you can see the number of jobs, 1.256 million, which is quite nice. Um, and then uh, employment change, they're going to be adding in another 300,000 jobs in this space. So should you be a full stack, front end, or back end engineer? Yes. By and large, on average, will you make more money as a full stack engineer? Yes. As a back end engineer, a little bit less. At, on the low end, a front end engineer, a little bit less. Yes. Will you make a good income in all of them? Is there growth in all of them? And uh, is there a lot of jobs in all of them? Yes. The barrier of entry on average is a bachelor's degree. Um, it is a it is a job that's going to be around. Uh, I know a lot of times people are all, the sky is falling, you know, look at WordPress, look at Wix. Uh, look, that's as a front engineer, uh, you don't do WordPress, you don't do Wix 99% of the time. It's not really, you're not too worried about it. Not to say that there aren't companies in the world who use it to, to manage their site and stuff like that, but you as a developer, you'll be building custom things that Wix and WordPress can't handle. Um, the other thing to consider is what it is that you want to do. Uh, I don't want you to look at a $95,000 to $115,000 uh, salary, and you know, it's about 20, 20 grand difference and say, oh my God, even though I just want to do front end development, I'm going to jump into full stack because I'll make you know, an extra 15%. That 15% increase in salary um, or 20% increase in salary, you can make that relatively easily just being accomplished and you know, getting some certs, upping your education, building a better portfolio, um, being an author, building some courses, all that sort of stuff. The stuff that makes you stand out. Uh, so. My, my advice to you is front end, back end, full stack, it's all, they're all great. And um, you can fairly easily transition from front to back to full stack uh, just as you have more years of experience. But really choose what it is that you want to do and the money will come uh, as long as you're focused on getting the money and doing what it requires, which you know we've talked about a few of those things. So uh, that's my thoughts. I'll include the links to the um, web developer and software developer. Bureau of Labor Statistics in the description below if you want to go ahead and check it out. I appreciate you guys watching this video. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, share, support me on Patreon, all that good stuff. Every time you share, share, a, share a video, a web developer decides to keep learning code. I want you to remember that. Uh, so if, if you have some friends that are giving up and you need to share the video, it's on you. I want, that. I want you to feel guilty about it. Uh, I'm, just, <laughs> I'm just kidding, guys. But I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Hey, baby, want to hear a joke? Okay. Wix developer. Hey, guys, if you're looking for a fun little project to do, I have my very first course out called Learn Angular by Projects Part 1, where we build a personal portfolio. It's about three hours of content. It's one project. It's not going to teach you everything in Angular by any means, but it's a great way to get your feet wet. You can go ahead and check the link down below. Get a, a coupon code, Coding God, or just click the icon.